Good day, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, listen to that heavy metal. It's positively orgasmic. I have been very excited about Brutal Doom 64 coming out because I love Brutal Doom and I love Doom 64. And I'm highly hoping that it is excellent. Now, this is the very first time that I've actually played it, and these are going to be my first impressions of the game. Now, I know a bit about it because I've been following the uh, Mod DB page, and we have uh, a few new uh, difficulty settings here. We've got Hell Fears Me, Survival Horror, and Survival Horror Harder. You're, of course, just going to do Hurt Me Plenty because I don't want to die during the first impression. You don't want to see the first room. Now, I already knew about this uh, intro battle, which is a really cool thing. Uh, once again, this just goes to show you how awesome retro gaming is and how awesome uh, Sergeant Mark IV is, because he knows how to make a really good impression when it comes to his uh, up up updates and remakes and things of that nature. And it's it, this is a lot of fun, but this is really just more of a cinematic moment. But once again, you're not directed. There's no, you know... Uh, arrows pointing you where to go. You don't have regenerative health. You could die here. You could die during this cinematic moment. You know? But the whole idea is you're supposed to run to the exit. And uh, it's a really cool introductory to the uh, game of Brutal Doom. Now this is actually based but not Brutal Doom, Doom 64. Now this is actually based somewhat on the uh, intro. Holy shit, that's a cyber demon. That's a cyber demon. Run away. I ain't got another blood pistol. You guys can handle it. Well, that was quick. But yeah, that was based somewhat on the uh, uh, introductory cutscene to... Oh yeah, there's nothing there. Because like, if you play this on uh, Doom 64 EX, there's actually something there. But we're playing it on Just Hurt Me Plenty, so I guess they're not. But uh, uh, that was based on the introductory cutscene where there's a battle and they all die. But you... Now, I've always been a big fan of uh, the Brutal Doom 64 guy. Or the... Doom 64 guy. I'm going to keep calling it Brutal Doom 64 guy, because I say Brutal Doom more than I do Doom 64. But, that aside, the Doom 64 guy was the uh, model that I would always use when I played this online back in the day. Which, sadly, I do not do anymore, but I used to play uh, Doom, not Brutal Doom, because this actually predates Brutal Doom. I used to play Doom online all the bloody time back in the day. Now, we're not going to play too much of this, but just to give you a good a good grounding as to, you know, what the game looks like. Uh, but I used to play Doom uh, a lot online before the rise of Doom 64. Or Doom... Brutal Doom. Blech. So many Dooms. Before the rise of Brutal Doom, I used to play Doom online all the time, and I'd always play as the Doom 64 guy. He was my favorite looking of the lot. Mainly because uh, he has that really cool helmet, he got really cool armor, and I always liked that. Now the original Doom guy looked cool enough, but like, he always, they only showed him with his uh, with, with his six pack hanging out, and you know I guess that looks cool, but they need to know that like that's ha that's after it got ripped off. He wasn't just going around like that, especially on fucking Mars. But whatever. But Doom 64 guy, uh, he was described in one area as like looking like Boba Fett. And you know what? He does look a lot like old Boba. And Boba Fett, the reason why Boba Fett was so endure in, in, enduring throughout the years before he actually, you know, got a character was because he looked cool. You know, presentation does play a big role in being memorable. And that's one of the reasons why, you know, Doom 64 has been very uh, uh, enduring over the years, despite the fact that it was on the N64. And the N64... You know, while it was popular enough, and I really do like that, that's really cool, that's a Duke Nukem 64 style, not, not Duke Nukem 64, a Duke, Duke Nukem in general, we got a, uh, uh, camera wall, which is cool, camera wall, camera monitor, ugh, my brain is not working today, Doom, Duke, and, cause like, there is a Duke 64, and I have done a playthrough of that on the Let's Play channel, <coughs> there's Brutal Doom, Bru <coughs> Doom 64, and all that, so, I'm getting all my D's, mixed up. Wait, that's, uh, that's not suggestive at all. You generally don't want to get the D mixed up, that's for sure. It can be somewhat painful. But anyway, as you can see, the gameplay in this is a lot more old school Doom. We're not able to reload. Uh, none of the real modern day enhancements that uh, the other Brutal Doom enhancement was. Well, this isn't even enhancement was. This is just, you know, Brutal Doom with, uh, you got the Brutal Doom gore. And you've got the Doom 64 levels that have been uh, enhanced in a variety of ways. They're a little bit bigger. There's a few new enemy types because I don't remember the shotgun guy 
being in the original Doom 64, like on the N64 cart, or in Doom 64, or yeah, Doom 64 EX. So I could not say if it was originally there, but it's cool to see it. But pretty much, uh, Sergeant Mark IV is probably going to please a lot of uh, Doom purists by leaving the gameplay as, you know, unaltered as it really is. Uh, there is that characteristic Brutal Doom quickness. Oh, we got the we got a fucking Berserk Pack here. The only problem I have with the Berserk Pack and anything other than Doom 2016 is it's not hardcore enough. Oh, crap. I did not get hurt nearly as much. But, like, okay. Berserk in Doom 2016 is just so much... So much better than any of the Dooms. I will I will admit this despite being an old school Doom fan. It's just, it makes it so much more epic. You know, because like, Doom 2016 guy, the Doom Slayer, he just rips and tears like you wouldn't believe. Whereas here, you know, you just punch them and they kind of blow the pieces. Which is cool enough, but it lacks that pizzazz that uh, Doom 2016 has. But... Still, though, the, the whole idea of this is shooting. Now, I remember this from Do Doom uh, 64 EX. Now, I never really liked the uh, night vision goggles, the MBGs, in the... Uh, now, I know this is the right one. Or no, it's not. I remember this being... I remember that being the... Oh, I guess you have to, like... I don't know, because, like, in, in Doom 64 EX, that's the one that did it, so... I don't remember... Maybe I just am misremembering. But there's a lot to like about Doom 64. Now, I did not own this game back in the day because uh, back in the day, you know, games were not cheap. Uh, you know, I was a kid at the time, so of course I didn't have any money. Uh, my mother didn't have a lot of money, and these games were all much more expensive then uh, than they are today. A lot of this is more or less more or less looks the same as what the original Doom 64 looked like. Uh, so. There are, I think there's... Well, obviously that that, that, that introductory wasn't there. I, that made the whole N64 explode, I think. It would just say, it would just say, please stop. I can't take it. It's too much graphics. Graphics. Oh, cool. Look at that. Oh, that's the fucking... Uh, that's, a new, that's a new Spectre. Now, I did like the Spectre in uh, Doom 64 in general, but that's a cool little effect they got going on there. That might have been there originally, though. I can't remember it precisely. But, like, we don't really have any new weapons. We don't really have too much new here. He's, he's kept a lot of it just regular, really. I can already tell you, I like it more than uh, uh, Doom 64EX, though. I'm probably misremembering that. It could be VX or FX or something along those lines. But it's running very smoothly. Uh, we're getting 60 frames per, per second here, and it, work, it looks and it works good. Now, as you can see, Doom 64 is a lot different from the original Doom. This came out after Quake, uh, so it's got a lot of Quake influences. This is very much a slower paced, well, potentially slower paced. I'm, of course, just breezing through here. Uh, but this is meant to be a much more slower paced, much more atmospheric kind of game. It's meant to be, God damn it! it's meant to be uh, more of a survival horror game in many respects than the original Doom. This really was, in many respects, Doom 3 before there was Doom 3, because in terms of storyline, and it's not like Doom really has that much of a storyline, uh, this takes place after Doom 2, so it is more or less Doom 3 before Doom 3 was a thing. And what's really cool, though, is Doom 2016 is supposed to follow on from this in many respects. The Doom Slayer is supposed to be this guy. And that is really awesome. I like the fact that the developers of Doom 2016... Now, this originally... Oh, shit! That's really cool. That's fucking awesome. Th this is why Sergeant Mark IV is popular as Okay, so, in the original Doom uh, 64, that would just kind of move up and down. And that'd be it. Now, I thought that was cool back in the day, because the original Doom didn't do that. Uh, but that's really cool to see that. Just smash through there. See, it's little details like that, because like, the level design in, in Doom 64 was really good already and all he did all this guy did all sergeant mark four did was just give it a little more pizzazz you know he just bring a little bit more cowbell ladies and gentlemen that's what he did and it works amazingly because like you did pretty much this was already perfect to begin with ladies and gentlemen but this just makes it that much better this is like 
this is like the candy flower on the cake, you know? It's, it's like, this is just what makes something that's already so amazing that much better. But yeah, you know, back in the day, you know, games were a lot more expensive. Uh, and so, there, I could have had Doom 64, but I believe I chose Turok 2. And Turok 2 weren't cheap. I think that was a, a $80 game. Turok 1 was also 80 bucks, which is why I didn't have that until I got it used. Oh, we got the more... Got Duke, Duke, Duke. And poor Duke. Let's look at this. This is Doom 64. Modder has done an amazing job. Better than, than anything you get from, like, a commercial studio. And poor Duke, what does he get? He gets Duke World Tour... Where John St. John just really phones in his Duke Nukem performance. And really, Duke, Duke Nukem can't be as awesome without a good John St. John performance. You know, you can't use mods with it. I'm lost, because I'm an idiot. But you can't use mods, because that's... Okay, also, look. The difference between a modern game and this game. A uh, modern game would have, like, arrows pointing everywhere I needed to go. This game, i got to actually, you know, figure it out. I mean, whatever next, right? I mean, wh wh where's my commanding officer go telling me to go attack? Uh, but anyway, but yeah, du Duke Nukem World Tour. Even the name's stupid. He's like you think about Duke Nukem World Tour. He's not touring the world. Maybe he does in that oh so epic, uh, you know, level wad. It's not like anybody's created one of those before. I mean, that, that's one of the things I find really annoying. It's like oh, it's done by the original mappers. Great, that's cool. But think about all the much better maps that are probably or better better uh, episodes out there. By fans who've been doing it for literally two decades, ladies and gentlemen. Come on! Ugh. But that's how it goes, though. That's how it goes, I guess. The modders never get really appreciated by anybody but the fans. Because, ladies and gentlemen, the fans always do better. Because the fans actually give a damn, you know? The fans actually care about a, a wide variety of things. And, you know, they actually want to make this game even better. They actually care about the source material. They're not just looking for a quick and dirty and cheap way of making money. And that's exactly what modern day publishers do. And I can understand wanting to make money, but when it's just... Oh, that's cool! I don't know if that was there originally or not. I, I can't imagine the N64 could handle all that. But it's like, okay, you know, the modders care about the community because they're part of the community. But the, the, the massively, the, the well-paid programmers and developers and all that, they don't seem to give a damn. Despite the fact that if they did give a damn, you know, they, they, people would love them and pay them money. I mean, it's like people already, despite being treated so shittily by all the developers, by all these massive corporate things, you know, still say shut up and give, shut up and take my money, you know. They still say it, you know. That's what they still do, and they're still treated like crap. And that's just bullshit, you know? It really is. But, ah uh, well, we got our modders, and they will continue to make games of the epicness, ladies and gentlemen. Such as this. Such as Brutal Doom 64. It's more or less just Doom with some more gore. And even then, it looks like Sergeant Mark IV is trying to appease the community, the, 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 the hardcore, old-school Doom community. Because I like the, uh, the Brutal Doom assault rifle. I like you know, all the modern enhancements, but this really takes it back to its original form, really. This is basically just some more gore and some upgraded and updated levels. It's like, if I wasn't using mouse controls, you could totally play this just with tank. Uh, so, I think that's probably what he was trying to appease, which, it doesn't bother me at all, but I guess in many ways this is a win-win. You can still make, you know, the, uh, well, I, I guess I am still an old-school player. Old school players who don't mind playing it somewhat new school, I guess medium school, middle school, there we go, uh, like middle school players, oh that sounds bad, that makes, it, that makes it, that makes one think of like, uh, those COD children, Blech. but yeah, you know, it's like, it can still make people like me happy, and it can, and it can also make the, uh, uh, really hardcore people, and I know people who are hardcore Doom fans who, they absolutely hate Brutal Doom. They absolutely hate Doom 2016. This should make them happy enough. Or at the very least, they can just be able to play, you know, the levels. Now, obviously, you'd want to play this on Ultra Violence, because I'm just breezing through this. Like, it's nothing. But, you know, it, it, it basically makes everybody happy, I think, in many respects. This is the one, one example of, you know, something making everybody happy. And I can't imagine why anybody complain about this. I mean, they always do. People always complain about find something to complain about. Oh, the Kakodemon's wrong. It has 
I don't know if you noticed, but it had a mana he had like a manacle on there. That looked cool. My favorite Caco Demon still is the Doom 3 Caco Demon. I liked that one quite a bit. Hey, can I jump over there? Jump! Yay! But I liked the uh, Doom 3 Caco Demon a lot, actually, just because I thought he looked really cool. Uh, the Doom 1 and Doom 2016. Oh, shit. Fucking Nightmare Imp. That's really cool. He's not just hard to see, he's fucking invisible. Wait, did I found a secret area? Where? Dun dun dun! That fucking. You know, the only good thing from Duke Nukem forever. Okay, let's save, shall we? Let's enter our save phase right now. Shit. Love of the rocket. But, yeah, the only thing that really uh, good that came out of uh, Duke Nukem Forever was the little Donna Donna Stinger. I like that one a lot. I actually say that in real life now. Although, you know, it's funny. Uh, there's actually one that's posted. I can't imagine that Sergeant Marco would care if I mentioned that he did actually comment on it with a very hilarious comment. Kind of shows you the Sergeant Mark IV mentality. Really quite cool. And I don't know why people liked it. Why there's all these rumors and lies spread about Sergeant Mark IV. But then again, he's, he's famous. And anytime somebody's famous, what do people have to do? They gotta bring him down. Don't bring me down, Bruce. Don't bring me down. But they always gotta bring some... Everybody's always gotta be brought down. Because how dare you... How dare you become something popular? But I, I don't know why people have to lie about Sergeant Mark IV. You know... Yeah, he probably said he's probably not politically correct, you know, because he doesn't have to be. He's not trying to appease a board of directors. He's not trying to appease a bunch of people. He's a person, you know. And so, yeah, he might say something you don't like, but that doesn't make him evil and a Nazi or some nonsensical shit like that, you know. And it really is, it just goes to show you how infantile people really are today. All right, lads, lasses, and, well, I can't imagine there's any other human species out there. What we have here today, ladies and gentlemen, is Brutal Doom 64. It is excellent. I'm absolutely enjoying it. I hope you guys think it looks cool and give it a download. And so I'm General Watts, wishing you good Brutal Doom 64 and good suffering or whatever makes you happy.